Hello and welcome to Assay TV. Today I'm talking with Shane Sakura, who is the Managing Director of Rumble Resources. Uh, Rumble is based down in Western Australia and their flagship project is the Western Queen Gold Project. The project revolves around two former high-grade producing gold mines, the Western Queen Central and the Western Queen South. Uh, Shane, great to see you uh, here today. Uh, tell us, to set the scene, um, how did you get involved with the Western Queen project? And also tell us about your first uh, few phases of drilling uh, down there. Well, thanks, Leo, uh, firstly, for the, taking the time today to get a, a rumble update. But the reason we, like you said, um, entered into the Western Queen uh, project option was that we love the high grade nature of the project. The, the Western Queen South went uh, 25,000 ounces at circa 3.6 grams. It still has a historic resource at 83,000 at 3.1. But the Western Queen Central was an extremely high grade open pit, 190,000 ounces at circa nine grams, which then went into um, underground at 10 grams. And, and what our technical team uh, uncovered early on was that the uh, limit of the drilling seemed to be focused on those two pits. So our company is all about making discoveries. And what we're excited about was the potential to find the extension to that Western Queen Central underground but also, was there a chance of finding uh, near a surface uh, open pitable resources all the way along that uh, Western Queen shear zone? So our phase two was um, focused on trying to understand uh, the potential of the Western Queen shear zone and, and uh, is there any geology for the pathfinders? So one of our main targets is the Western Queen uh, Central Underground, um, as I mentioned before. The reason uh, we like it is, I guess it's a, there's an analogy to a recent discovery by SBX, who found the West, uh, the Penny West deposit, which was a uh, 300,000 ounces going 13 grams, had a strike length of 300 meters, uh, and was bought for uh, by Arenas for 300 mil. We felt like there was a the potential to find that underneath the Western Queen Central. And so historically there was a six meters at 36. Uh, we then stepped down the uh, defined chute, uh, and we actually hit six meters at 34. So that gave us real confidence that there was a potential for some resources on the ground. But what we found was um, uh, quite unique is that there, what hosted this high grade material was this massive tremolite scarn, which is like a, a bright green material. And when we did some um, study on the historic mining of the open pit at Western uh, Queen uh, Central, that was also in the um, tremolite scarn as well. So that gave us a, a nice pathfinder for that particular area. Um, and, and part of phase one and two, we also looked um, at was there potential for more along strike to the north in between the, um, uh, the, the two pits as well. And we did. We, we found some really interesting numbers that potentially had high grade shoots. And, and another pathfinder we found was um, tungsten, which seemed to halo uh, the high grade gold as well. Mm. So, so those first two phases gave you a lot of confidence uh, in, in the project overall. And um, then you, you launched your phase three drilling, which I understand uh, was, the, was the largest drill program um, the company, in the company's history at um, 18,000 uh, metres. Um, so you, you had your, in your two first two phases, you were, you were looking underneath the Western Queen South. But in phase three, you, you've been going out to these other um, targets around uh, the two queen pits, which I think you, you've named after sort of nobility. You've got you've got the Baron there. You've got the Princess, the Marquis, uh, and the Duke. Uh, tell us about some of your preliminary uh, results you're getting out from from the phase three drilling. Yeah. Uh, so one one part of the the first part of what you're talking about was we're trying to start to get some definition of that Western Queen Central Underground, and so now we've actually got uh, three contiguous holes from near the underground to depths. We've got a six meters at 36, a five at 22, and a six at 34. And they're all in massive tremolite. We then um, put three holes uh, beneath the, um, the inferred chute where we hit moderate grade uh, mineralization. But at depth, we actually had two um, decent intersections where we hit, uh, it was four meters at six grams, which had a, a one at 11 uh, and a one at 11 as well. Um, and we had another hole, which was 4.7 metres at 6 grams. We had a 0.27, um, it, one, or 0.7 metres at 27 and one at 10. But why I'm explaining this to you is that that actually hit moderate tremolo. So what we feel like has happened now is that whilst it's not a, um, a direct uh, defined shoot, we think it's actually moved 50 metres uh, to the south because these tremolo scar and shoots just don't form. They actually, um, you know, um, uh, near the high grade goals. So we feel like now we just have to drill a couple of holes further to the south and that um, uh, Western Queen Central extends. 
and that, like I said before, the Penny, um, uh, the Penny West discovery was 300 metres long. We've already defined 370 metres of strike already in the shoots. We think there's, now that we've got a good handle of the geology and the structures and features, we can start to really um, you know, define some resources there. And so as part of this uh, phase three, we wanted to see, could we find a Western Queen Central um, open pit? And to the north, we feel like we have um, the real opportunity of this, the new Duke zone, which um, was a series of high grade shoots. So just while we think there's an analogy there is that the Western Queen Central um, was formed with two high grade lenses that formed at depth. So the top 40 metres was barren. And then from 40 metres to 240 um, is where the, um, the, the resource develops. And in particular, the 120 metre mark. So at the, at the, the Duke, we've got two high grade lenses um, near surface, so a little bit different to the Western Queen Central. Within the top 40 metres, we've hit eight metres at 26 from 14 metres. We've hit uh, um, six metres at 25 um, from 48, and we got another seven metres at uh, 60 from 70 metres. So you can see that the grades start to increase similar to the uh, Western Queen Central. Um, and what we found there too is the high grade gold is in massive um, tremor light once again, similar to the Western Queen Central. So these, these two um, near, uh, nearest shoots, we think could start to form um, and combine further at depth like the Western Queen Central. So there you've got all this um, scope for uh, open pitable resources. And then like the Western Queen Central, the potential for underground, because these shoots just keep continuing on. So that was a really exciting discovery for us. And so as you start heading uh, towards the south, we've got the, the Baron and the Princess Zones. They're looking like uh, oxide resources, but you can see, clearly see that there's some um, uh, shoots starting to develop at depth. You've got the Western Queen South, like I mentioned before, it already has historic resources, 83,000 ounces at circuit three. But, but what we're seeing there too is potential for um, uh, high grade core that actually could have the potential for high grade underground. And we've recently just uncovered, previously undiscovered, the, the, south, uh, the south extension to the Western Queen South, where we've identified 500 metres of gold um, and you'll see um, in our recent results there's some decent numbers there it's just the start and we're also finding a significant amount of tungsten and like i said before is a, is a fantastic pathfinder so all in all the excitement for us is about finding new high grade discoveries all the way along that shear zone hmm. so from the duke in the north to the marquee in the south how long are we talking about how long is this shear zone so now we've actually got 2.7 kilometers of gold um, we're starting to see some real um, scale and size to this um, the potential for the resources, not just at um, uh, near surface, but obviously at depth, because these these shoots could be forming all the way along. Absolutely, and you've you're you're currently undergoing your phase three drilling campaign. You've had some results come in, but you've also got some still still out in the lab. How yeah, much still come in. So we believe there's still uh, thirty to forty uh, percent to come, which is really exciting. We hope to complete this uh, phase three drilling in the next couple of weeks. And obviously following on that from that we'll uh, have those results so plenty of exciting news flow to come still for the western queen mm. and also i mean you've got all these these potential resources coming through um and once you've defined those resources and you might be looking to develop a mine there in the in the area what have you got there in terms of um, infrastructure so what's really handy um, when you obviously look to find resources you hope that there's some uh, easy access to potential processing facilities. And we've actually got three within 120 um, kilometres. We've got uh, the Remelius um, set up, we've got West Gold, and we also got um, the Dalgaranga, uh, which is only 40 kilometres away. They're all hungry mills, uh, so subject to defining significant resources, we've got the potential to um, use those facilities, or if it becomes big enough ourselves to uh, build our own plant. Hmm. So you're already in an area where there's a lot of mining and uh, processing going on. There is. It's just, and, and look, they're all uh, maintained roads by the local council as well. Uh, it's a mining lease that we currently have, so it doesn't take too long to ramp up to get to that um, production phase. And you've got three hungry processing facilities in the region. Um, so, uh, you know, whilst you're obviously focusing on your flagship project there at Western Queen, uh, you're also, you also have a number of um, uh, joint ventures uh, that you have um, uh, so your joint venture partners working on at the moment. Um, in particular, um, you've got two projects there with Independence Group, the, the Thunderstorm Gold and the Thunderdome uh, Copper Nickel. Uh, and then you've got the uh, Lamel uh, project uh, with AIC Mines. Um, starting with the uh, Thunderstorm Gold project, 
Uh, tell us a little bit about um, what's going on there and some of um, IGO's uh, results. Yeah, look, it's been a real um, significant upgrade to that project recently. Um, it's great having a wonderful partner like IGO to, to commit their expertise to the region. And what they did early on was a, a regional stage exploration program where they, they did a um, 1.4 kilometre by 400 metre wide space drill program throughout the course of the project. And what they uncovered in their first stage pass was six metres at nine grams, uh, which is an unbelievable achievement when you consider the, the wide space nature of the drilling. They also found another 13 kilometres of gold in the Paleo Channel, uh, which was an exciting development for the project. Um, they have recently gone back there now and um, stepped out 50 metres and they intercepted 16 metres at seven grams from 40 metres. So, you know, the only drilling in the area is actually hit six at nine and 16 at seven, which is a big step up for the project. But what they've also been doing is getting an honest student to study the, the gold grains in the, in the Paleo Channel. And the reason they do that is to find how far away you might be from a potential source. The first two grains look like they were transported. The third grain looks to be primary. And, and what that means is that you are near um, the source. So what they've uncovered now with this, went by completing the whole um, uh, exploration of the whole project, they've uncovered 30 kilometres of mineralisation. Um, there's a north-south structure that we think uh, is gold bearing. So in multiple locations, the gold is uh, leaching out into this paleo channel. And now that we know that the gold is primary, uh, we feel like there's a chance for significant gold region there. Um, to give you an idea, well, Brett Keeler, our technical director, was a discoverer of the Tropicana deposit, um, prospect of the year for that. And, and when they found the Tropicana, there was only two kilometres of mineralisation. This one now has 30 kilometres of mineralisation, high grade hits throughout. And as I said, the honor student highlighting the fact that um, we're near the primary source. Mm, absolutely. And, and independents are also working on another project uh, for you, the, the Thunderdome gold, uh, Thunderdome copper nickel project in the Fraser Range. Um, what have they found so far? So we are located circa 30 kilometres north uh, east of the new Mawson's discovery, and they've completed a um, series of targeting um, uh, programs where they've uncovered 12 kilometres of copper zinc, multiple conductors. They've also got magnetic and gravity features similar to Mawson's pre-discovery. So what they're looking to do, uh, hopefully in this quarter, is to get, go out and test those um, targets. And as I said, um, you know, I think um, Legend Mining hit 500 mil market cap based on that discovery. So there's a lot of upside for, for Rumble shareholders in that one as well. What's your stake in that project? So similar to the Thunderstorm, we own 30% uh, free carry through to PFS. Fantastic. And then AIC, as I mentioned earlier, they're, they're doing the uh, LAML uh, project, working on the LAML project. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, these are the, the sort of targets and the projects that keep you up at night. Um, We've actually got um, a project in between uh, Telfer and Nifty. Telfer's a, a 32 million ounce, which is a, a large domal feature. Um, and in our first pass of exploration, we did some magnetics and we identified the Lamel Dome, which is the same shape, size and inferred host rocks as the Telfer Dome. Uh, we then did a really uh, good uh, joint venture with AOC Mines, who are great operators um, that have now started their first pass of exploration. Um, never been drill tested before, they're doing a, a large RC and diamond drill program. And um, like any point in time, I'm hoping for the, the big call when uh, a major discovery happens. So that's real elephant country out there as well. Absolutely. So while you're focusing on Western Queen and all of these, these exciting targets you're hitting and all this drilling, uh, these drilling results that are coming in, you might also get this call from your JV partners telling you, telling you that they've hit the big one. Yeah, and that's a part of our strategy. We call it the pipeline of project strategy. So what you get with Enya and Rumble, you get the near-term high-grade gold um, nature at the Western Queen. That's our focus. But you've also got the Tier 1 uh, gold operation at the Thunderstorm, similar to a Tropicana top target. You've got the Tier 1 nickel copper at the Thunderdome, which could be a Nova or a Mawson's Discovery. And then you've got the Tier 1 capability at the Lummel Project. You know, it could be a Nogalus to the Telfer Discovery, a 32 million ounce. So it gives us multiple avenues to discovery in the near term, so much um, news flow. We've also got a couple of other um, projects that we have in the brace on like the Monara Gully, not as advanced as the Western Queen and, and not um, you know, our key focus, but we've also completed some um, small uh, RC programs out there that could be on the path to discovery as well. So, so much news flow, so many exciting um, catalyst uh, potential coming up in the near future. 
Mm -hmm. Well, fingers crossed uh, for the for the rest of the year and going into 2021. You've got a lot of uh, exciting uh, options and opportunities there on the horizon. Um, very good to speak with you today, Shane. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on SATV. Really appreciate your time today, Leo. Thanks.